a 10. And then all of a sudden you get a spike and you get a 15,000. And then you go down, you know, the greater the water climb, the greater. Because for the longest. Take a stamp. Go ahead. 50 or 80 miles away and say Valdosta did it. Say that one more time, Sean. I said, we can't possibly take a sample 50 miles down Creek Stream at any time and say, this is Valdosta's fault. Correct. Correct. That's the we point. Technically. But it's a cumulative. It's a cumulative. Everybody has to be held to, to a standard. And why on earth Valdosta doesn't go to a rapid infiltration basin for a marsh before it goes into the river? Or maybe they do. Am I, am I wrong? I'm, I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time, sir? I'm asking if your implement has a chance to go into an infiltration basin or a marsh where the plants can clean it up a little. No, so we, the river. no, you're talking about like a tidal marsh type or a, uh, or basically a, uh, he's talking about like a constructed wetland. Yeah, we don't, no, sir, we do not have a constructed wetland. And, and the reason, I mean, you know, Sean, we, we could have a constructed wetland, but from our standpoint, you know, we're meeting what is required by the state above and beyond. So, I mean, it, it's it's one of those, we want to be good stewards, but even if we installed a, a uh, constructed wetland to the EPD, it still considers that a navigable waterway because it, it actually touches the stream. Does that make sense? I understand a wetland is a wetland. Yes. And Georgia law can be even stranger than Florida law. Yes. And and you have to realize there's a lot of there's there's a lot of things that we can do, but you know it it's it's you're meeting your permit, and that's that's what you're there to. That's your job, and. And most of all, 98, 90% of the time, you're meeting your permit. Well, I mean, the way it is. Well, I mean, let's face it. I mean, let's be 100% honest. Uh, you know, by all means, you know, we can say, and, and this just goes to show that we're trying to make sure that we do our due diligence on being good stewards of the environment. We're only permitted to remove. 85% of the solids in the wastewater treatment train and we're only permitted to remove 15 to 10 percent or 15 to 10 milligrams per liter of BOD and 45 and 30 milligrams per liter of TSS but we're actually striving to achieve greater than what we're actually permitted for. So. Uh, well, you know, and that's true because the technology is out there, but can I ask a question? If a, per, if a wastewater plant was built today, the today standards in Georgia, wouldn't you have to remove way more than 85%? Actually, you do not, sir. Uh, if, and, and I can, I can get with, uh, with y'all, but I'm, I'm sure even Mr. Quarterman can pull this up, uh, but he could probably go around the area and pull up the NEPIS permits for each facility, and pretty much the guideline for TSS and BOD removal per state requirements, over 90% of the plants is 85% removal. Well, and, and I, I've worked in Orange County where they do 99% removal. Right, but yeah, that is discharged into a salt water, correct? Well, it's, no, it's actually one of them is 
went to a power plant, and another one, Iron Bridge in Orlando, is sent to a marsh that they have to maintain water going to the marsh to keep the plants alive so they can keep their permit. But it's all 99% solids removal. Right. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. I, over, I think if you did a poll on necklace permits and looked as a whole for the the actual facilities that dump into the Swanee River Basin, I I would uh, I would I would be uh, willing to say that over ninety percent of them only have a eighty five percent removal in their permit. Or is eighty five percent of solids are removed? That's what they're required. Over ninety percent of it if you if you did a a uh, gathering of data for all the facilities that dump into the okay. Swanee River Basin that are permitted by the state of Georgia. That well, over ninety percent of them are only required. That now, and you're meeting your your plan is built to do that, but I'm just a little bit shocked by the fact that that's what Georgia is is doing is 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 only removing 85 percent of the solids. When in Orange County, Florida plant, they removed 99 percent of the solids. But uh, and so maybe it's our two states have to get together because. That water is coming to Florida where we have higher standards. Well, but sir, we're already discussing stuff with Florida and Alabama. That's why we continue to meet at the table. Uh, for instance, if you look over in Thomasville and the area that dumps into the Flint River that goes to the Chattahoochee and Apalachicola River, which I know this is not y'all, but there is actually a snail that they have been uh, researching to try and save the certain snail that is an endangered species. So as, as anything, us being environmentalists, as we get more data, I'm sure those numbers will change because a lot of permits have gone from limiting where they used to just have a ammonia limit. They actually now are doing away with ammonia limits and having what they call a total Nitro, nitrogen limit instead of just an ammonia limit. So as research and information becomes available, I'm sure the the levels will get more and more stringent. But but sadly, with anything, just like a computer, as we learn, technology grows faster than what we're able to keep up with a lot of times. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try our best to meet the guidelines that we have now, and as the guidelines are improved, then we adhere to those guidelines. But again, like I'm saying, we're already going above and beyond what we're required. So, you know, it, it's one of those things, we're doing the, the best that we can do at this time. With, with what you have, I it's, get that. Thank exactly. You. All right, we've been, you've been extremely patient. And oh, no, I, I'm here to answer as many questions as I can without overstepping my area of expertise, so to say. Well, you know a lot more than most of us in this room. I wouldn't necessarily say that. <laughs> uh, we all have our know, fields. We all have our fields that we, uh, we understand better than others, let's put it that way. Uh-huh. I'm going to find one of those fields someday. <laughs> Are you talking about using UV? You're talking about using a UV light? Yes, sir. Ultra, ultraviolet light. So y'all have a big light? We actually have, have what they call two banks. We have, the way our plan is designed, we have redundancy. Um, when you come into the influence lift station, we have three pumps. Mm -hmm. uh, two pumps. If the flow demands, we can run two pumps, but then we have a third pump to where if one of the two pumps goes down, we have a redundant backup. Mm -hmm. Well, then from there, we've got two force lanes. 
So we can either run on one force main, which one force main is capable of handling 8 million gallons a day, or we can put on two, which is handled. So the plan is designed for 17.1 million gallons per day. So from there, it goes up. We have two bar screen channels, and then the air, you, you have double redundancy to where you're not, you know, and that's what actually helped us. I mean, if we would have only been on that one clarifier instead of two clarifiers, you would have had twice the amount of spill through the drain clog, it but being that we had the other clarifier online, it took the flow, you know, so. So there's always that when they build a plant, they try and build it with the backup. I'm just surprised you use a big UV light. Yep. We've actually got two banks or two models for channel one and channel two. Yeah. I've, I've used a UV light to clear water when I can't be blue. They probably have that. Yeah. That's how I can use it. I have their app. Um, so, um, right. And I don't want to, you know, lose any of the opportunity to okay, talk about this stuff. Uh, it's just that you know, we've spent an hour on it so far and probably should move on to doing a little more stuff. Feel free to stay and help out because once again you know a lot more about most of this than we do. Well I actually if y'all are if I've answered all y'all's questions to the best of my ability I've actually got to pick up my son for football practice. <laughs> but you know again I apologize for the spill. We're doing everything in our power to try and keep it from happening again. I would love to see each and every one of y'all at the plant. I hope you will take us up on our offer and contact Scott Fowler or Daryl Hughes. I would love to show you around the plant where you have a better understanding. And again, I apologize for the spill. You know, but um, I, I just appreciate y'all letting me come and share with y'all. I appreciate you coming. We sure do appreciate it. Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to duck out. But, uh, I appreciate it again. Please thank Director, Director Muse and Scott Fowler. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. All righty.